going on guys and welcome to the ninth week of investing this year uh we are talking about you know happiness health and wealth on this channel so every uh day monday through friday we invest 50 bucks in the stock market and we are going to dive into our tracker first and then we'll look at some of the investments and an update on what my current average forward dividend yield looks like as the market's coming down so some pretty cool stuff to take a look at i've been going to the gym again i'm feeling good i'm feeling strong like whoo, whoo, oh, yeah, that won't happen again but <laughs> let's, take <a> look. <laughs> let's take a look at the dividend tracker and we'll go from there all right so the highlighted blue line here is where we're at so today it is february 27th of 23 um my current weight all right we're at 285.7 pounds which is good we're going back in the right direction which is you know thank god but um which brings our weight loss total back to 13 pounds on the year so this channel did start january 1st um we're down 13 pounds which feels pretty good um, I definitely went pretty hard in the gym. I'm actually a little sore today, um, but, you know, that's going well. Our investment account balance, we are at $2,422.03, so nice and steady growth there. Um, total dividends earned, we've only earned $6.10 so far. That will change as we head into the next month, so we'll see some payouts in the next week or so, I hope um they haven't declared the payouts but we have a lot of dividends coming in march our total growth right this is what i like to see especially when we're starting off we are down 92 dollars and 36 cents right so the reason i like to see this is because every day it goes down our daily investment of 50 bucks just goes a little bit further into buying more dividends for ourselves in the future I know this is a bizarre concept to, to look at, and I know that's strange, um, and it is strange. I mean, it is what it is, but we're investing in our future. We're buying future profits of companies at a discount, and that's why I wanted to go over our total dividend yield, um, because it is growing and growing and growing, so it's very exciting. Uh, we'll get into that later in the video. Total YouTube income, we're still at 100 bucks, um, so haven't earned past that. Uh, total subscribers, we are now at 1,267, so to the uh, new subscribers, I appreciate you. Total view count, we're at 63,317 views. I had said on Friday that I was going to try to make some more videos and um, be more active. I had a week where I just really sucked like last week i just was terrible at everything i gained weight I, you know i didn't make enough videos I, I wasn't doing a good job but this is a new week we're doing a good job we've been making videos uh, and getting some traction our total watch hours is now up to 1373.7 so for those that are new to the channel part of this is i do hope to get monetized one day i hope to make some income off of this and then i can invest that income that i make doing this into another portfolio and show you how gurus actually make their money. Um, plus, it's kind of fun to watch a channel grow. But in order to do that, I need to get my total watch hours to 4,000. So that's why we track watch hours on the channel. You kind of get paid on YouTube based on how much of your content is watched and for how long. Uh, that's a good metric. Other things are like referrals from signing up on SoFi and stuff like that, which if you would like to sign up for SoFi, there's a link down in the description. For the first $10 that you put into a new trading account, you will be given $25 of free stock as of today. Um, yeah, I don't know why I did that. That felt good, though. Wow. Oh, <laughs> so, anywho, that's kind of what's going on with the channel in a snapshot, right? Really, I want to dive into SoFi, look at a couple other things there, and, and just take a snapshot of the portfolio. And then we're going to talk about the dividend yield of this portfolio and how that's growing as the stock prices are being bought at cheaper prices through dollar cost averaging. All right, so here we are in Seeking Alpha. This is how I track what's in my portfolio um, and how I get all my news and stuff. But I sorted our portfolio by our largest holdings down to our smallest holdings. 
Um, and we're going to take a look at the scorecard, who's doing what. So this top one, SCHD, this is Schwab's U.S. Dividend ETF. Um, basically, we have put $400 into this. We're at $401.15, 5.36 shares. So pretty stagnant right here. Um, the good thing is we are up slightly. And year-to-date performance, we'll see right here, is actually down 0.9%. Uh, so again, through dollar cost averaging, you're going to see that as kind of a theme here. It's a lot more or a lot less uh, volatile when you're dollar cost averaging. So we make out pretty well on some of these. Um, o Realty Income Corporation, we're at $484 of that. That's 6.21 shares. Um, their dividend call date is, is tomorrow. So they're doing their ex-dividend date. Um, as I said, dividends will be pretty big in March. But we have 6.21 shares of that. Um, up a little bit, again, year to date, they're at 2.44. So it's kind of interesting between these two because we've put $400 total into these. These uh, two funds each get $10 a day instead of $5 a day like the other ones. But it's funny here how uh, SCHD, which is down year to date, we have more profit on it. It's just funny how that works, right? So when stuff's dropping, you're buying it cheaper. It, it's kind of just kind of counterintuitive. So it goes back to the beginning when I'm like, I'm so excited. These stocks are down. This is the best, right? And people are like, you're nuts. Like how, why would you think like that? Well, just right here, you know, the, the first two stocks we're going over, the one that's down year to date, I'm up the most. So pretty nutty, uh, kind of cool there, but Jumping down, we have JEPQ, this is JP Morgan, uh, their NASDAQ Equity Premium Income ETF. This is designed to pay you a monthly salary, basically. Um, we have $300.44 of that, which is 7.05 shares. Our forward dividend yield on this is 12.5%, which is just ridiculous. Um, and this hasn't even paid out dividends for a full year yet. The fund's not a year old. <laughs> Um, which is why we're not investing into this daily, right? This has kind of been the project, like the observation piece. Where we're throwing a little bit of money into it here and there just to see what it does. It's very new. So far, it looks like it performs very similar in parallel to JEPI, which is JP Morgan's other income ETF. Um, but again, we don't really know that, so we're just kind of letting it be. Year-to-day performance up 3.65%. Now we're getting into the stocks and funds that we are putting $5 a day into. Okay. So Pepsi, this one is up the most for us. Uh, we're definitely team Pepsi. So we have $206.81 in that. That's 1.18 shares. We've put $200 into these stocks so far. Um, but we put $200 in. We're up $6.81. But then you come around and look at this. Down 2.6% on the year. So again, a little bit of consistency there. This is down 2.6%, you know, and we're up. Dollar cost averaging, I like it. JEPI, we have, uh, again, JP Morgan's Equity Premium ETF, $202.63. That's 3.75 shares. Again, we're up two bucks on that, and they are down 1.17% on the year. Next is T-Mobile. I do this all the time. T, T is AT&T. The stock is AT&T. Because the ticker symbol is T, and I know it's a phone company, I always just spit out T-Mobile. It kills me. I don't know why I do this, but it's AT&T, not T-Mobile. I'm sorry. I don't know. My brain just wires that to T-Mobile. Like, shame on you, stock exchange. Anywho, we're at 201.37, so we're up on that. 10.58 shares of AT&T. Now, this one is up 4.51% year-to-date. They've been booming, um, like booming. And now we're into the stocks that we are down on. So Procter & Gamble, we have $198.87. This is still basically just even. You know what I mean? We're down $1.13 on this. We have 1.43 shares. But look at the drop year-to-date in Procter & Gamble. I mean, when you're talking about the strengths of dollar cost averaging here, this is down 8.12% year-to-date. 
and we're like even on it that's nuts like i, I love that it's really good to see um again we're buying up these high paying dividend stocks with good history and we're not getting just crushed by the market coming down um so that's really great blackrock 191 and 18 cents that's 0.28 shares yeah this one we've lost a little bit of money on uh, but look at the dividend yield of blackrock right now which is uh very very high considering where it normally lives um but yeah looking across here they're down 3.56 percent that's uh you know we felt this one a little worse than the other ones could have still been worse um but yeah this is this and mpw are where, we, where we're feeling it mpw right i love mpw i'm a big fan of mpw mpw we have 169 dollars and 94 cents all right we're down 30 bucks it's a big hit all right um thankfully dollar cost averaging helps us out a little bit here we have 16.42 shares of this um which means in april we're getting a big check from dividends from from mpw so that's good um but yeah we're they're down 5.3 percent um 5.3 percent of one or sorry 200 dollars means we should be down 10 bucks you know kind of like black rock um but we are definitely down way more than that so and and again i'm not afraid of that mpw is all over the place like it's literally all over the place i think that it's a lot of investors looking at it and just trading the news um versus trading the value i made a long video about that and um you know that's something that i would definitely take a look at if you're interested in stocks like mpw uh their medical properties holding they own the second largest uh, owner of non-government hospitals in the world. So massive company. Um, yeah, I did a value uh, a video about like the value of that company and stuff like that and why I think that it's set to skyrocket. But look at this dividend. I mean, it's paying 11% for dividend right now because the stock is so, so low in price. Um, and that's why we're so down. It, I mean, this thing crashed in the past week, two weeks. So this was at like 13 bucks a share. Now, because we have so many shares of it and it's dropping $3 a share. Well, yeah, there you go. There's, there's the loss of 30 bucks. And then lastly, NASDAQ, this is just kind of lingering around in the portfolio. Um, we have $130 and 31 cents of it. It's 2.31 shares. They pay out a dividend this month. So we'll probably hold it till the end of the month when we get paid our dividend and then sell it and most likely dump it into JEPQ because that's what we really tend to do on this channel. And then the last thing, which this is like a random, I don't know why I did this. Actually, I do. I thought it would be fun and just to try and test out the um, options trading on SoFi. But I have a call option here for NASDAQ that I bought for 10 bucks and um, it's down to eight bucks. So when you have a call option, uh, for those who don't know, that means you're holding basically a hundred or the option to buy a hundred shares. So if you see this where it says eight cents, the cost of this option is eight cents per share. All right. So since we're talking about a hundred shares, you have to multiply the eight cents by a hundred. So that's eight bucks. Okay. So when I bought this option for 10 cents per share, it cost me $10. Now it's worth eight cents per share. So $8 and uh, I'm down two bucks. Yeah, it is what it is. And that's pretty much what we're looking at in seeking alpha. All right. So we've seen how many shares of things we have, and we've seen a lot of negative numbers and we've seen me get smoked by MPW and I'm okay with that because I think it'll come back and I am very confident in their ability to pay the dividend after looking at their financials. That aside, we need to talk about the dividend yield, right? So the average dividend yield on cost, meaning what I've paid for this stuff and what is paying for the dividend now based off what I hold. We need to take a look at that because we've got some pretty exciting mm -hmm. growth in that department. And, you know, 
that's what this whole thing is about. This whole thing is about not just building a stock portfolio to hold stocks, right? It's to build a stock portfolio that pays me income, right? I want to retire without ever selling off any shares. I want to retire off getting those checks from Procter and Gamble, you know, getting those checks from MPW for holding all these hospitals and stuff. That's how I want to retire because as those properties go up in value or those stocks go up in value, so does my portfolio and then my dividends should grow with it. And, you know, that's how I want to do it. It's a long, slow play, but there's a lot of small signs that you can follow where you're like, whoa, this is actually turning out pretty good. There's some growth here. My income in the future is growing. All right. So that's really what I want to cover because we're almost done with February. We're not quite there. We're starting up this week, whatever, right? However you want to look at it, it's a good time to kind of take a small snapshot of what that growth has looked like. So we're going to dive into a little tracker that I made, and uh, we're going to look at the dividend yield average and how much money we're making currently in dividends. All right. So this is probably like the least exciting chart that I've made ever. But it's exciting to me because the data is really, really good here. So I'll break down what we're looking at. In column A, right, we have the name of the stock or, or fund. So we have, you know, what we're holding. We have the total value of what we're holding here, right? So this is the total value. We have, as I said, $169.94 of NPW. We have the current forward dividend yield, okay? So this is what percentage of what we own is getting paid as a dividend. And then in column D, we have the total amount of dividend income we are currently earning every year, okay? So in MPW's sake, their current four dividend yield is 11.2%, right? That's gonna update on Seeking Alpha tomorrow in the morning. It's 11.2%, I calculated myself. That's $19 a year of income from MPW. <laughs> AT&T, 5.83% dividend yield. We're pulling in $11.74. JEPQ, we're pulling in $37.55. Realty Income Corporation, we're pulling in $18.96. SCHD, we're pulling in $15.08. Jeppy, we're pulling in 20 bucks and four cents. NASDAQ, a dollar and 85 cents. Procter and Gamble, five dollars and 21 cents. Pepsi, five dollars and 40 cents. And then BlackRock, five dollars and 60 cents. Our total four dividend yield right now is $140.47 per year. And guys, this is, this is a portfolio that you know, we really haven't invested very much into. So, you know, considering we set aside not that much money, I mean, we set aside 2,400 bucks. We're on day 40 of investing. Like, that's not very much time. Day 40? Like, this is a 10-year thing. If, uh, you know, if you could imagine adding a zero to this balance, like we go another year and a half, this... You add another zero. We're talking over a hundred bucks a month. So it, this is escalating very, very quickly. I guess that's what I'm, what I'm pointing out. Um, but here's one of the cool things, just looking at it, right? My current forward dividend yield is now 5.84%. That is the average dividend yield of my portfolio of everything. So I'm currently making 5.84% in dividend payouts without ever having to sell a, sh a share or a stock or whatever. That's what I'm earning per year in payouts, right? That's a great, great, great dividend yield. I mean, that's, that's a huge thing. A lot of people try to get that out of their investments without looking at dividends, you know? So 5.84% is a great payout. Um, now we just hope stocks go up at like like they typically do or funds and things, they, they usually grow. But the big thing here 
is that last time, <laughs> which is the worst, I admit that's the worst metric. I didn't put a date to it. I just have it as last time um, in here, so sorry. But the last time I ran this chart, and I'm sure you can find it somewhere in the videos, we're at 5.51%. So we've made a 0.3% difference in our total dividend yield, which doesn't sound like a massive change, but you know, to go from 5.51 dividend yield to 5.84, um, is actually pretty sizable for for a long term investment to be 0.3 percent more favorable. Um, that's like the expense ratio that you would pay on Jeppy. So you have to actually you pay 0.3 or 0.35 percent of uh, your your Jeppy holdings into the management of the fund. Like this covers that. So that's actually really really good. And I expect this current forward dividend yield to grow as we move on you know we're buying stocks and funds extraordinarily cheap right now so as we keep buying them at higher dividend payouts we're earning um a lot more quickly right so uh because because remember some of this stuff we bought at a lower dividend yield because the stocks were higher um plus as we get paid out more in dividends a lot of this stuff has cost us less money so if you're earning 5.84% for free of your shares. Um, that means next year that like 6% of my shares will be free. So that just pushes along and increases that forward dividend yield um, even better. So kind of cool. Good to see the dividend yield growing. Um, and it's only been two months. So, you know, typically you want to see that grow by the success of companies instead of them dropping in price and buying them cheaper. But hey, I'm okay with it. However it gets done, it gets done. And if we end up with that current average dividend yield of 7 or 8%, like, it'd be pretty good because this is not that high risk of portfolio aside from some people who debate MPW or maybe at and or, you know, really every stock has risk. But I'm not a wealth manager, credit counselor, or financial advisor. I'm just a guy in a triangle-shaped room ranting on the internet about personal finance for your entertainment. So with that, guys, thanks for watching. As always, continue to work on your happiness, health, and wealth. That's my goal. And uh, roll the outro.